Hey, Beach Hunter here. Well, it's almost a summer here in Florida, and of course now we're starting to be deluged with media reports of sharks and sharks at the beach and all that. Uh, so today we're going to talk about sharks. We're going to talk about facts, and we're going to dispel myths. So stay tuned. A couple of weeks ago, this story appeared in the local media and it made the rounds on Facebook and it's these guys on uh, Indian Rocks Beach or Indian Shores Beach uh, caught an eight-foot bull shark and pulled it uh, on onto the beach and then they released it afterwards um, and uh, you know you can see it's a big shark it's attracted a lot of people it attracted a lot of attention uh, in the media what they did is they uh, paddled their uh, bait out past the buoy so they were out a fair distance off the beach when they caught it but these sharks do come in close and it has this story has caused some people uh, some concern and you're probably also familiar with this video uh, which this was actually shot back in February of 2012 uh, off of uh, Palm Beach and essentially what it is uh, is a large, all these are sharks, those little black dots, those are all sharks out in the water and it's part of their annual migration. So uh, the fact is there are a lot of sharks out in the water. They do come up close to the beach frequently, um, but they rarely bother people. So let's look at some facts and try to put our sense of fear into perspective. Every year in the beginning of summer, shark stories start to appear in the media. Perhaps you remember back in 2001, Time Magazine pronounced it the Summer of the Shark. And I think that was kind of kicked off by uh, an eight-year-old boy that survived a bull shark attack in Pensacola, Florida. And there were quite a few other shark attacks, or shark bites, as I prefer to call them, uh, during 2001. But was that really the summer of the shark? I mean, were there really that many more shark bites uh, that summer? And let's look at some statistics. Now, these numbers are from the International Shark Attack File um, and sharkattackfile.info. And this, goes, uh, this covers the period 1990 to 2012. And you can see that uh, shark shark bites uh, usually there were around somewhere between 10 and 20 shark bites a year up until 1995 and there was a big jump uh, in 94 95 from uh, to 23 and then to 29 uh, incidents but for some reason 1995 was not the summer of the shark and then uh, a again in 2000 there was a jump to 37 which actually uh, appears to be a, a record uh, for any given year. And yet 2000 was not the summer of the shark. Why not? Why did 1995 and 2000, uh, why were they not named as the summer of the shark? Why was it 2001 when there was actually a slight drop? Well, what could the media have been focused on uh, in 1995 that prevented them from recognizing uh, this jump in shark bites? Well, how about the O.J. Simpson trial, which absolutely dominated the media for a long time uh, and back in 1995 and shark bites just weren't in the news. How about 2000? What happened in 2000? Oh, that's right. A very contentious presidential election. Even though there were 34 shark bites in Florida and one fatality in 2000, uh, it was actually the next year that was named Summer of the Shark. So, let's look at some actual numbers. What is the chance of being bitten by a shark in Florida. Florida has about 50 million or more annual beach visitors and it averages somewhere around 16 shark bites per year. That works out to about a 1 in 3 million chance of being bitten. 1 in 3 million. And actually only 1 in 100 bites is fatal. Uh, we'll talk some more about that in a second. but. Uh, to put that in perspective, uh, more than 2,000 people are killed in car crashes in Florida every year. So you're probably, well, you're definitely uh, in more danger driving to the beach in your car than you are swimming in the water or surfing at the beach. 
What are the highest risk beaches in Florida? Well, if you look at the shark bite statistics since 1882, uh, and keeping in mind that those early years, the 1800s, early 1900s, eh, the reporting might not have been all that complete. Uh, but if you look at those years, Volusia County, which is Daytona Beach and New Smyrna Beach, Brevard County, which is Cocoa Beach, and Palm Beach counties, um, we saw the video earlier of all the sharks in Palm Beach County, uh, those are the most, that's where the risk is highest of being bitten by a shark. Now, on the Atlantic side, or in the Florida Keys, uh, they have the most bites. Out of 663 uh, recorded bites, 606 of them are on the Atlantic side or in the Florida Keys. On the Atlantic side, about 1% of bites are fatal. On the Gulf side, while there are many fewer bites, only uh, 57, 58 bites, 7% um, of those or four out of the 58 were fatal. Now, why is it that your percentage of uh, bites on the Gulf Coast uh, are more likely to be fatal, a higher percentage? Um, basically because the Gulf Coast bites tend to be by bull sharks, which are larger, more aggressive, bigger mouth, more likely to bite a person. Uh, on the Atlantic side, you're more likely to be bitten by a small spinner shark, um, or a little black tip shark that's chasing bait fish in the surf and if you happen to be a surfer you get your hand or foot nipped but um, not likely to be fatal. How to avoid shark bites. Best thing is to follow these rules. Don't swim after sunset or before sunrise because that's when sharks are most active. Don't go in the water if you're bleeding. Don't swim where people are fishing. Avoid murky water, deep water, or river mouths. And this, this is a big one. Um, if, it, if the water's murky, the shark can't see you, and is quite possible they will bite you before they realize you're not a fish. Uh, deep water attracts sharks. River mouths, any place where there's a change in salinity, uh, or where there's a lot of uh, refuse or junk coming from some sort of a processing plant or whatever, pollution attracts sharks. Swim near other people. There's some evidence that a lone person out swimming is has a higher chance of being a, uh, bitten by a shark than someone swimming with a group. Uh, stay close to shore, not so much because sharks don't come close to shore, but they do. But if you're closer to shore, you're closer to help. You're, you can get out of the water faster if you see a shark. Um, and people can get to you and help you. And it's also, shallow water is usually more clear, and so you're more likely to be able to see a shark that's approaching. And of course, you should avoid schools of bait fish. So these are basic rules to uh, to keep you safe from sharks, it's not 100% guarantee because there are so many sharks out there. But as you can see, your chances, one in three million, not really something that you should lay awake at night and be concerned about. I also want to observe that I have broken all of these rules numerous times, uh, particularly when I was younger, and I've never been bitten or even approached by a shark as far as I know. <laughs> I, I've, I know I've never been bitten, but I, I've, as far as I know, I've never been uh, approached by a shark. Although it is possible it happened and I just didn't see it. So I hope this has been helpful to you. I hope you, it will help quell some of your anxiety and go to the beach and have fun. If you found this video useful, please click subscribe to my YouTube channel or give me a thumbs up, share it with your friends. Also visit my website at beachhunter.net. You can get a copy of my free beach survival guide or a copy of my Gulf Beach access guide or visit me on my blog at blogthebeach.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you at the beach.